So during your open water class, your instructor probably showed you several different ways to clean your rig, whether you spray it with a water hose or you just simply dip it down into a water bucket and agitate it enough to clean it out. He probably even told you, do not press the purge button while you dip it down into the water unless the lines are pressurized because water can come up through the hose and get inside the first stage and corrode it out. If he told you that, he flat out lied to you. What's up guys, it's Ron again from Lake Acre Scuba Marina. And if you are new to our channel, take a few seconds here, make sure you click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now I had this video actually been requested for quite a while now. And a lot of you guys wanna know how, I, how do I personally clean my regulators? What steps do I take? And I really can't make a solid video on that simply because it would just take forever to do. So what I am gonna do for you guys is show you how I do a quick thorough cleaning of my reg set after every dive, whether I'm getting out of the pool with students, whether I'm diving in a local lake here, or even when I'm diving in the ocean. And to be honest with you, yeah, we're an inland dive shop, we're on the lake, but in the last two weeks, I've dove in a multitude of environments. I've been out in the ocean looking for a lost diver. I've been down in a well at the bottom or the base of a mountain. I've been out here on the lake doing some recovery dives. And I dive in a lot of different environments. So my regs are getting a lot of wear and tear and a lot of abuse, and they're getting a lot of, say, hazmatic material on them, but still my cleaning procedures really don't change. It doesn't matter the environment I'm in, it really doesn't change. Now, what I'm not gonna be doing in this video is breaking down the individual parts, the first stages, the second stages, and show you what I do on a yearly basis, but I am gonna show you how I clean my regs, and I'm gonna be going over some of the myths that maybe your instructor or your dive mentor told you about what you should do and not do. Now, another thing I wanna quickly uh, talk on is don't overthink this. When you're cleaning your system, you need to keep it as simple as possible. So, and that's basically what I do is I try my best to keep it as simple as possible. I take a little bit of water, whether it's a water hose or some type of container filled with water, take a little bit of gear wash and that's it. That's really all I'm gonna be using in this video because that's what I do in real life. The first thing I wanna do though is show you just a quick rinse. Now this is typically what we do after every night in the pool with students. We get them out of the water, they break their system down, and of course, we're gonna spray it off. So I'm just gonna take a water hose, get a little bit of water going, and I'm just gonna spray it off. Now it is important to note here that the first stage has its dust cap in. But I do wanna show you something really neat real quick. I have two different regulators here. This is an old Sherwood Brute. And if I show you really quick on camera, you'll notice that the first stage, the port is actually open on it. And if you forget to replace your dust cap and you start spraying water, water is obviously gonna go up inside that first stage and we don't want that. So always make sure that you replace the dust cap of your first stage. Now, if you happen to have a model like this one, this happens to be the 82X first stage from Mares, it has what's called an AST valve or a dry first stage system in it. So if I re remove the dust cap, you'll notice that there's a little AST valve up in here. And what that does is that's a moisture barrier. It prevents any water from coming in. So if I'm spraying it without the dust cap, more than likely no water is ever gonna get in that first stage. Well, let's talk about submergence for example. Let's say if I take this first stage and I actually place it down in a water container, I've just got a five gallon bucket here, and I just place it down there, maybe agitate a little bit. Anytime I do this, I like to use gear cleaner. So let's add a little bit of gear cleaner. This just happens to be Pal Palau. Takes about six capfuls, say per five gallons. And I'm just gonna agitate it a little bit. I'm gonna set it and I'm gonna forget it. After about 15 minutes, pull the system out, let it dry, and I'm good to go. Well, even with that AST valve, if I happen to submerge it and I forget to put that dust cap back in, water's still not gonna go into there. Now, in a first stage such as the Sherwood here, it definitely would. Water's just gonna rush into the system and then you're gonna have corrosion start to develop in your first stage. But one of the reasons I really like the Mares line is simply because of that AST drive first stage system. Now, it's, I'm not telling you to never replace your dust cap. Obviously, I replace my dust cap. It's always good to prevent um, any type of damage from your system or to prevent corrosion, 
but if you happen to forget or you just take it off and you're spraying it, it's going to be okay if you do it once or twice and forget about it. Now, if you're worried about it, let's talk about how we get the water out of the first stage. Now, there's two parts to this. One, there's something that you could do if it happens once or twice. And then there is something that your technician can do if you neglect your system and do it every time you wash it. First thing that I would do is obviously hook it to a system or a cylinder pressurize it and that dry air is going to rush through your first stage and it's pretty much going to dry just about all the water out that actually collected. Now if it had a catastrophic failure say underwater and it's been submerged for a lengthy period of time then obviously what you want to do with it pressurized is run that purge button. So while it's pressurized just hold that purge button it's going to constantly push dry air through that first stage and run it out into the second stage. Now with that being said you still want to take it to your local technician at, as soon as you get a chance let him break it down and see what else needs to be done to it especially if it was in salt water because even though the water might have been dried out now you may have sand or salt inside that first stage and you want to get that out so it doesn't uh, induce corrosion. Speaking of second stages, let's talk about some of the myths of a second stage. Now, back in the 80s, which is when I learned how to dive, I was always taught that if you wash your second stage out, whether you dip it in water or even if you just spray it out, to never actually spray water inside the second stage. And that was always crazy to me, because think about it. If this is my primary and I'm breathing off of it, my alternate's hanging around my neck, guess what's happening underwater? I'm getting water inside the second stage. So is there really anything wrong with putting these in water and getting water in them? No. But if we look at the myth of you should never press the purge button and dip it down into the water, because now water is going to rush up through that hose and into the first stage. Well, that's true and not true. It's true simply because of what's called Boyle's Law. And you probably remember this from your open water class. Boyle's Law simply says as pressure increases, volume decreases. And if I take an open container and flip it upside down, as I submerge it, pressure is going to push that water up, but it's only going to press it up to the top of the water level itself. So let's say I've got my second stage submerged about that far. I do have the purge valve pressed. Water's only going to the top of the water. So in this fashion, Water's only went in about that much. It no way, shape, or form overpowered gravity, rushed up this hose, and got inside the first stage. So that's kind of a myth that you, either your instructor or your mentor probably told you, but it is still not a good idea to press that purge. But if you do, check this out. Press the purge, stick it in. Water's only going to go to whatever height or whatever level your hose was in the water. Even with the first stage lower, it's only going to be to the height of that. But now we do have a little bit of water in here. So how do we get it out? Simply hold it up or hold it down just like that. Press the purge, shake it, let it run out. If it's connected to a first stage and obviously you can just pressurize it, hold that purge button, it's gonna blow it out and you're gonna be fine. You're not going to corrode your system out simply because you pressed the purge and stuck it in there. So let's say that we did get more water in. Let's put the whole entire system in the water like so, and let's press that purge button one more time. So I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna find my second stage here. Okay, take my second stage, push the whole system down in there, and I'm gonna press that purge button, stick it in, now we may have an issue. That water is going to get all the way through that hose and we are going to have an issue with water getting in the first stage. This is the only way that I would ever recommend you not pressing that purge button if you completely submerge your regulator in there. But you're still probably not going to do that. If you're ever worried, all you've got to do is take it to your local technician, let him tear it apart. He can do a good thorough cleaning and drying of the system and you're going to be fine. Now, if you're the type that you don't like spending money at your local dive shop, then one of the things that you can do is take an equipment-related course. SSI has the Equipment Techniques course, and we're going to teach you some of the tricks that we do on regulators that's actually going to prolong the life, and it's going to save you a ton of money by not having to take your reg in, say, once a year for good thorough cleaning. That is something that you can be doing at home. Now, it's not a complete technician-level course because that's where we get into the rebuild, but it is going to save you a ton of money from not having to take it to a technician at least once a year. So with that being said, guys, it's a simple procedure. Please don't overthink cleaning your regs. Whether you dip it out or you use a water hose, 
it's a simple procedure. Just remember this, if you're gonna be pressing the purge button on your second stage, make sure that hose is up because that water is not gonna overpower gravity. And if you are gonna be dipping your first stage into the water, you wanna make sure that the dust cap's in or in the event that you fail to put your dust cap in, make sure you have a model that's got a dry first stage system like the AST system from uh, Marez and you're gonna be fine. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. If you guys wanna see a more thorough cleaning video, what we actually do when customers bring it to us, let me know. I'll try to make a video for you as well. If you got any questions or comments about the equipment techniques class from SSI, just let me know and I'll try to answer those questions as well. Guys, if you liked the video, simply smash out thumbs up button for me and definitely share it as well as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business